Man Under the Influence by Dr. John Ayutut. The legendary history and religion have definitely influenced the present people. Most studies given to students in the world are about the old philosophies, the accepted scientific findings, both old and new, the story of history of the world, and last but not the least, the religions in the world, which are mostly archaic. There are many observations in these studies, which the instructors relay to the students. The only thing transcending in these studies is in the field of science and technology, which includes the medical field. The study of history is constant, as well as the belief in religions. Today's man, though modern, is very well connected to his past. His modern interpretations of things have to do with his preconceived ideas based mostly on the past. The law of the lands in many countries, including the individual national anthems, are old. Transcending our ways to do business, but the old is still pretty much intact, especially the principles. Strong as the influence of the past, what is stronger than that is the influence of modernity, today's fad and fashion. Yet, this event is not new, for this has always been the movement of the past. We have newer gadgets such as the cell phones, the internet, and the iPads. Yet, human nature throughout modernity has been the same as in the old. New technology doesn't very much change the culture. It changes how we do things, but our, our emotions are all but the same. We have overcome ignorance in a lot of ways. We have even overcome poverty in some ways, but we haven't overcome pride, greed, lust, and anger. These emotions have remained raw and conflict-laden. Our language has remained the same, but with many add-ons, people of today are more emboldened to be more vulgar and blatant and frank. Prosperity brought more material supplies, but instead of becoming decent, we have become more the opposite. We have changed in so many ways, yet also in so many ways, we have not improved in building human relations. We live in dreadful times of terrorism. Never had we expected that an attack of the magnitude of 9-11 would ever happen and the shameful war in Iraq is proof that we are still much of a failure than success in achieving world peace. It looks like the United Nations is only a circus play. Perhaps the greatest irony of all is the failure of religion to usher in real world peace and order. All religions preach peace as the ultimate gain, but with its rise, it has not squelched pornography in the world, even a little. Religions have failed, and in fact, they have miserably failed. The modern religions have experienced tremendous growth because of television publicity. Innate in man is the quest for real peace, and indeed, many people get swooped by the religion's offer of peace in a spiritual fervor and in personal development flavor, but only to find the religious leaders amassing wealth and live in lavish splendor, and that is much to the amazement of the observing, non-believing populace. We are all hooked and under the influence. When the book of Reverend Rick Warren, The Purpose Driven Life, came out, the Christian world embraced it with so much intensity, like it will be the book that will ultimately bring deliverance to the whole world. Churches everywhere used it alongside the Bible. The book became the sensational best-selling, enriching the author beyond imagination. But the book is a hoax.
it is a hoax because it missed to explain the truth that God did not make man with a purpose. Rick Warren used religious terminologies to seduce Christian readers and the ignorant Christians received the book like the revelation of having a purpose as a new thing. The fact is business books at all times have been bringing the fact about purpose. Having a purpose for a life is not a new thing. It's in fact a regular thing. And it is not true that people were made by God for a purpose. The truth is God made people only with a choice and with a choice comes the purpose. If indeed the purpose for people is to serve God, wouldn't it be natural for all people to serve God then? But majority of people in the world do not serve the God of the Christians, let alone they look for this God. If it is inherent in man to purpose in himself to serve God, then it should follow that people everywhere should be looking for the God of the Christians. But that is not happening. The Christians have to bring the fact of God to people. It's the Christians that offer God to the people. The people in coming to religion as to look for the answers of their misery are like sheep that are being led to a trap.